Good morning, everybody. This is the only vintage video I'm going to be posting. And the reason why I'm posting it is because I need Monday, today, off. Because you'll understand later this week when I explain why. The recipes in this video are actually our family favorites. So this is a recipe that we like to make all the time. It's really good, very frugal, and it's fun to make as well. So, you guys, I'll see you on Tuesday with a fresh new video. And a lot of explanations are going to be coming your way. See you guys on Tuesday. Cheap meal is going to come from this cookbook. And it is called The Soup Mix Gourmet. And this I got just the other week at the thrift store. And so many of you said you would like to see some recipes out of it. It is called The Soup Mix Gourmet by Diane Phillips. We are on page 256 and it is called Zucchini Stuffing Casserole. I will read to the ingredients and then we're going to make it because it sounds really delicious. Zucchini Stuffing Casserole. Two tablespoons of butter and one medium onion chopped. Three cups of grated zucchini. Two medium carrots grated. One can of cream of celery or cream of mushroom soup. One cup of sour cream and four cups of herb season stuffing cubes or stovetop stuffing. And we mix it all together in a big bowl and then we are going to bake it at 350 degrees at 35 to 40 minutes. So let's get started on this. Now this recipe does not call for any type of meat but you could always add a little chicken and always add a little ground beef to it if you would like to have it a meal with meat. Today we're going to make it as it is in the cookbook and we are not going to add any meat. Now I have made this already with some ground beef and it was really good. So let's get started. So I already have my onion sauteed in some butter and that we're going to put into our bowl that we're going to add the three cups of grated zucchini. We're going to add two carrots. Now this is more than two carrots because we're going to use this in another project. So we'll just estimate it's about two carrots. And then we're going to add one cup of sour cream. And this is about half empty so it's about a cup. As you see, I do not do precise on most of my recipes. And then we're going to add one can of mushroom soup. Now you can also use either one can of mushroom, cream of mushroom, or one can of cream of celery. But I had cream of mushroom and that's what we're going to use today. I've used both. I've also used cream of chicken too and that was really good. To that we're going to add, it says, four cups of stuffing cubes. I always use the stove top stuffing, but you can always find other ones, but this is what I usually use, and this is about four cups. See how easy and quick this is? Like I said, it's very good with chicken, and it's also good with ground beef. So we're going to make sure that we stir it very well. And then we're going to put it into a buttered casserole dish. And that is all it is to this. My grandma used to make this, the one that is Fanny that you hear in the diary. Later in her life, when she was in her 80s, she used to make this all the time and we loved it. So this is one of my favorite recipes all time because it brings back memories of my grandma Fanny. All right, so it's mixed up really well. Put it in a casserole dish just like this. And we're going to even it out. So this is very healthy, very good for you, and children seem to enjoy it as well. All right, 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes, and when it's browned, I will bring it out and show you. In the meantime, we're going to make another small dish. So while our casserole is in the oven, I'm going to share with you another small item I'm going to make today. 
we like to have on hand what is called egg and olive sandwiches. Now I don't know if this is something in the Northeast or if this is something that everybody knows about. I'm really amazed from day to day how I talk about certain foods and the people on the West Coast have no idea what I'm talking about. And then other items everybody eats. So let me know if you eat egg and olive. So what we're going to do is I have a bowl of water. I have a bunch of eggs that I really need to get used up. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find out if these eggs are still fresh enough to eat. So what we do is we drop our eggs in some water, cold water. If they float, they're bad. If they sink to the bottom, they're fresh. And if they stand on end, they're great for peeling. So we are going to put some of our eggs in here. I think I'm going to use about eight of them today. All right. So let's put them in here and see what happens. Great! They're all fresh, so that works out perfect. So all of the eggs, none of them have floated, and they all are laying nicely. So we are going to use these eggs. So I'm going to take them out of my pan, my bowl, and we're going to put them in here, and we're going to hard boil these eggs. And when we're finished, we're going to cut them up, and I'm going to share with you how we make egg and olive. Egg and olive is good with salad, and egg and olive we generally eat in a sandwich. So let me get these eggs hard boiled, and I'll get back to you after they're done and peeled. And I'll share with you a very special recipe so that's been in my family. It's finished, and we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. But we're going to work on an egg and olive. So this is the egg and olive. So I did about eight eggs, and they're chopped up, and they are boiled. So they are hard boiled eggs that we chopped up. To that we're going to add one jar of green olives. Doesn't matter the size. This is a recipe that it goes by taste. So we'll add all of these olives in it. It's just so good. All right. To that we are going to add a little bit of mayonnaise. It's usually about a third cup to a half a cup. I only go by consistency, so let me see how much it is here. That should be about right. You just want to make it moisten it to make it wet. And that we add about a tablespoon of mustard, prepared mustard. This is the same ingredients that I use for deviled eggs. So basically it's your deviled egg recipe. To that we're going to add one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. And then we are going to add one tablespoon of white sugar. And about a teaspoon of celery seed. We're just going to mix it all up. This is always eat, eaten cold, so you eat it cold. And then I'm going to plate up and show you how I eat it. And this is great to have on hand in your refrigerator, and it will last about one week. You want to eat it up within five, around five days, but it will last up to a week. And that is what it looks like. So it's egg and olive. So I'm going to make myself a sandwich. I'm going to get a little of this casserole and I'm going to clean up and I'll show you what it looks like when we're finished because this is a really good meal and it's relatively healthy as well. All right, so here we go. So I have two pieces of deli bread, which is basically your Italian bread. This is whole wheat Italian. We're going to put our egg and olive on the bread and it is lightly toasted. We're going to take some spinach and put on top of it. And that's how you eat an egg and olive sandwich. Then this, let me move my bowl. This is the casserole. Just like that. It's like a stuffing casserole. Get one more helping of that because I really like this. So my friends, 
Not only is this a cheat meal Monday, but this is a healthy cheat meal Monday. We have spinach, we have eggs, we have olives, we have carrots and zucchini with a little bit of fat with some sour cream and some cream soup. And this is a meal that's really good to eat. Now, if only my husband would get home from work and we can eat together. Mm -mm. I hope you give it a try because this is a really good meal. It's really cheap and it makes you feel good after you eat it because it has a lot of nutrients in it. Take care everyone and we'll see you guys. Mmm. Tomorrow. <laughs> Here's my Cheat Meal Monday playlist. See you tomorrow.